here guys and today we're talking about team black sheep's crossfire system now the crossfire system encompasses all of these crossfire products the modules the tango 2 radio the receivers and the actual communication protocol back and forth. Now this uses a 900 uh, megahertz signal. John from the future here, guys. And I'm here to tell you that Crossfire receivers have been slashed. The prices have been slashed. Team Black Sheep has reduced the price across the board for all of the nano receivers by $5. So, Johnny5 is here to tell you about this $5 price reduction and the nano receiver is going down to $24.99 and the special edition with the Immortal T antenna is going down to $29.99. What? A uh, great time to switch over to that Crossfire ecosystem. Now on with your regularly scheduled programming. And a lot of the proprietary stuff that they have built in allows you to go farther, have a better collection, and with the new updates to this system, it actually lowers the latency even further. And that is called CRSF Shot is the latest. And it is reported to be up to 25%, maybe more, less latency than the previous version which was already considerably faster than <laughs> than the fr sky system that i've been using the xm plus was been my primary receiver for a long long time so i'm definitely late to the party but in order to review the tango 2 radio i had to try the system and so i installed it on this race quad that you can see um and I had been putting off trying Crossfire because I was afraid that I might like it a little bit too much, but I wanted to know, would it really make a difference in my race? After trying Crossfire, I realized this is a feature that I must have at minimum for racing. The latency was something I could feel drastically and I was able to do things my first time flying a CRSF shot. I believe that's what you get when you have the Tango 2. And it just felt unlike any other flying experience I'd had before. Um, and I'll tell you why it's a particularly big impact for a pilot like me and how I fly and how you may want to decide on if it is a system that you want to go to. Now, I actually thought this was going to be more of a pain to mount but it's actually a little bit easier. Uh, and so normally with like the XM Plus, it has the little dual um, dipole antennas. They come out the back, like for this quad, they would come out back here and then you would get some of those forever tubes, put them on here. Those always seem to fall off. They always get caught in the props. That's ah, just a pain. This, um, even though it is a little bit more size and weight, uh, you can easily just anchor them either to the front arm or to the back arm. Some people put them on the arm like that. I think that's the best reception. I think actually if you want to go long range, you want to have them mounted vertically, but for racing, this is totally fine. Where you are going to save time is binding, especially if you go to the field with a new quad that you haven't set up. Um, you have to kind of dig in there and it's like, oh man, can I hit the bond button and plug this thing at the same time and hold it with the little driver? Oh my gosh. And especially in a quad like this, I couldn't really reach that very easily. I might have to take this whole pot off. It's a pain. With this system, all you do is plug it up. A receiver that is not already bound to a module or to a Tango 2 radio will automatically go into bind mode. So then in order to bind it up, all you do is turn on your radio, you go over to the Lua scripts, you execute that, you just go on there and hit bind, it's automatically gonna connect to the receiver. And the nice thing about it is that it will go ahead and ask, do you wanna update your receiver, which you are gonna need to do. Hit okay, it'll take about 30 to 60 seconds, boom. It's connected, it's updated, it's bound. And Team Black Sheep has found the best update system that i have seen in all of fpe perhaps one of the best update systems that i've seen in any market um you know you can't really get much easier than something like apple where they push the updates to your phone you go to sleep you wake up it's updated this is 
just like a hair half step less than that oh so easy guys so easy never having to hit that bind button again when you install a new receiver when you build a quad i mean that's worth a little bit of something to me um so i'm jumping in guys i have held off for far too long but i went ahead and invested in enough crossfire receivers to just make it rain crossfire receivers all day and i'm going to be installing these in all my five inch quads so here's my recommendation to you if you race, if you freestyle and you want to get the smoothest, if you're going to bandos, if you're going anywhere that you're going to be going long range or you need more penetration, um, absolutely go ahead and invest in that crossfire system. The this module, I've had this module for over a year. I just haven't got around to using it. I've been putting it off because I didn't want to change too many variables in my environment. But when I'm flying, here's the difference that it makes for me. I'm the kind of pilot that flies visually. Some people can fly by memorization and they mostly let that take over like people that are gamers people that are musicians um, i fly visually so whenever i see that curve coming up that turn that gate i start adjusting my sticks and i might adjust too far i might need to go back the other way i might need to move because there's somebody in front of me or if i'm freestyling i might need to move because a ghost branch all of a sudden came out of nowhere and i could feel the difference in the lower latency it was allowing me to do things that i didn't think i was skilled enough to do and then i realized it wasn't my skills holding me back it was the latency of the receiver system that i've been using and my first two or three packs on a race with this new system with a new radio that i'm uncomfortable with i noticed that i my my turns were so smooth the arc was so smooth i've been watching other pilots footage dvr races freestyle whatever for years and wondering like how are they able to make those arcs and those curves so smooth i always seem to have like those little micro adjustments and the crossfire system allowed me to do that the first time out that has been holding me back now that may not be the difference for you if you're the kind of pilot that flies by memorization that can see the distance in your eye and know that's 20 yards away it's a 35 degree angle turn and just know how to put those in if you're the kind of person that doesn't make corrections it may have a slightly different effect for your flying but for me i had to go with the system so so even though the tango 2 wasn't going to work for me to be my only radio it got me to try the crossfire system and once i tried it i knew i had to jump in i just can't go back at least not for racing so what are you gonna do guys for 2020 are you moving over to crossfire we all want to abandon uh, FR Sky for their scummy ways anyway. So it doesn't matter if you're fully committed, go ahead and buy the Tango 2. If you're not fully committed, you still want to apply the Whoops Jumper and the Radio Master version of the Jumper T16S is coming out very, very soon. It has some awesome, cool features. I'm probably going to have that on the channel as well. Um, if I'm super late to the party, everybody go ahead and go in the comments and tell you, I told you so. Why did you wait so long to try Crossfire? Uh, and that's because I am a Luddite. So when it comes to some of those things, that's somebody that's like a caveman that still uses ancient technology in a lot of ways. And, uh, but you got to go with what works, what works for you. And so thanks guys.